Okay, sorry for that. Um, I had some issues I had to take care of. Um, so let's continue on our notes. Um, when are radical expressions in, a, in their simplest form? So our goal is we have to um, get radicals in what's called their simplest form. And to fill in these blanks, a radical expression is in its simplest form if it follows these three bullet points right here. The first is that there cannot be any perfect squares other than one in the radicand or underneath the house. Okay, can't be any perfect squares underneath the house. There can't be any fractions, so no fractions are under the radical. And then last, no radicals are in the denominator. In case you don't remember what a denominator is, it's basically the bottom number of a fraction, okay? We're gonna talk about this in more detail when we start doing some of these examples. So just make sure you fill in those blanks with those three words, and again, we'll go back to it and we'll talk about them more. All right. One of the first steps to simplifying radicals is finding the prime factorization. You might not know what that is by the term, but I think once you see it, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. You may remember this as creating a factor tree to find the prime factor. So that's what I was just talking about. Um, we're going to create a factor tree. What are prime factors? A prime factor is a number greater than one that only has the factors of one and itself. Now I know that's a lot of words, but again, we're about to do some practice and it's going to explain that further. Or you'll be able to understand that further, okay? So 54. So here's the thing. We're trying to find a number other than one that goes into 54. Well, 54 is an easy one because it's even, so we know two goes into it. So now we need to figure out how many times does two go into 54? Well, you can do that by taking 54, dividing it by two, it's gonna tell you what other number goes right here. And the number is 27, all right? So two is prime. The only numbers that go into two are one and itself. So we're finished with that. We're gonna circle that two. Well, 27, there's some more numbers that go into 27. Two does not go into 27 because it's not even, but three does. And three goes into 27 nine times. Three is a prime number, so we're gonna circle that one. But there's a number that goes into nine, and it is three again. So three times three. So now let's write the prime factorization of 54. It is going to be two times three, times three, times three. So I got these numbers by the numbers that I have circled down at the bottom, okay? Just at the bottom of each branch is where I'm getting these numbers from. All right, so let's do the next one, 45. Well, 45 ends in five, so I know five goes into it. And again, if you wanna figure out how many times five goes into 45, well then get a calculator, your phone will work. Do 45 divided by five is gonna tell you what number goes in right here, and that number is going to be nine. Well, five is a prime number. The only numbers that go into it is one and itself, or five. So that one's finished. I'm going to put a circle around it. Well, we just did nine over here. We know nine has the factors of three and three. And threes are both prime numbers. So I'm finished with that one. So now let's write our answer. Um, and we're going to always start with the smallest number and go to the larger number. So we started with two here and then worked our way through our threes. This one, we're gonna start with three because it's smaller than five and then work our way to five. Let's do 98. 98 seems like a big number, but it's actually gonna be shorter than this one over here. We know two goes into it because it's an even number. 98 divided by two is 49. So two is a prime number. If you don't know what numbers go into 49, well, it's not even, so we know two doesn't. So try three, do 49 divided by three. It doesn't give you a whole number, so that doesn't work. So then try 49 divided by four. It doesn't give you a whole number, so that doesn't work. And keep trying, and when you get to the number seven, 49 divided by seven is gonna give you a whole number, and the answer is going to be seven. So those are all prime numbers. So now we're gonna list that as two times seven 
times 7. So here are my prime factorizations of those three numbers. Okay, so now we're going to use that in order to simplify radicals. So we're going to simplify the number 108. So off to the side here, let me make sure y'all can still see this. Over here, I'm going to do the prime factorization of 108. Well, 108 is an even number, so I'm going to say 2. 108 divided by 2 is 54. Again, you could use your calculator to figure that out. So 2 is a prime number. So I'm finished with that side. So now i got to do 54. Well, 54 is an even number, so 2 goes into it times 27. And if you didn't know that, you would do 54 divided by 2, and it would give you 27. Well, remember, we'd already done 27 on this first practice one, and 27 broke down into 3 and 9. So there's a prime, there's a prime, and then 9 broke down into 3 and 3. Okay, so here's our, here's our answer for this first. Step one was find the prime factorization of the number underneath the house. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So next it says determine the index of the radical. Since we are only talking about square roots, the index will be 2, which means we will circle all of our two of a kinds. So guys, long story short, this is all underneath the radical. Now we're going to look for pairs of numbers. Well, I've got a pair of twos and I've got a pair of threes. This three right here doesn't have a pair. That tells me that that three is going to stay underneath the house in my answer. Okay? So that tells me I've got a pair of twos that needs to come outside the house, a pair of threes that need to come outside the house. So I've got a two and a three outside the house. I've got a even though there were a pair of twos and a pair of threes under here, they become single numbers out here. That might seem a little confusing, but again, we're going to do several more practices on your, on your worksheet, and I think you'll get the hang of it. Well, two times three is six, and then six square root of three. That's actually your final answer right there. Okay? Again, that's a hard one. I'm not sure why it started off with such a difficult one. We're going to do some easier ones in our, on our practice sheet, okay?